What is going on you guys? I just wanted to bring to you guys a video today talking about X-Wing 1.0 versus X-Wing 2.0. I wanted to kind of talk about some of the differences and some of the most major changes. If you are just uh, coming into this game right now and you're wondering, well, what's the difference between the two? I'm going to talk to you about a lot of the changes that X-Wing 2.0 has brought to the game in just kind of a big summary video. So one of the first things that's going to be different and one of the first things people notice between these two games is that uh, a lot of the ships have been redesigned. So you're getting like movable wings on uh, certain things. You're getting um, dockable ships that can actually uh, physically come off. You're getting a lot of little things like that. So it seems like there's some physical improvements to the properties themselves, but that's certainly the least of the changes. Um, one of the things you're going to notice, is we're just going to look at the base to talk about some of these first uh, couple of different changes. First off, we have lines here uh, that are going to basically segment the ships into a whole bunch of different sections. First off, ships now have, uh, instead of just a front firing arc, they also have a bullseye arc printed on there. Now the bullseye arc doesn't actually do anything natively, but it is the width of your actual um, rangefinder. So this was used to synergize with other things. There are certain upgrades that will give you bonuses if you're in a bullseye arc. Secondly, um, every ship is going to have four printed, printed firing arcs, and those printed firing arcs are going to be used to reference other things as well. Um, you know, and granted, no, no ship is just going to have native um, stuff for every firing arc, but it does help for things like turrets or uh, uh, other uh, aspects. Um, another thing that every ship is going to have lines in between each of those firing arcs, and those are useful for a whole bunch of different things. One of those things that that's useful for is if you wanted to reinforce, you now have a front and back section on every single ship, regardless of whether or not they need it, but it's there to be referenced by other things. As well as barrel roll, you can now, um, barrel roll, you're going to line your one template up, you know, I, I know I have the five here, but you're going to line your one template up to the side and then put the, you know, on the other side, it's either going to go all the way forward, all the way back, or side to side, and that's kind of how you barrel roll now. Um, still, la large ships still do it the same way as they did in 1.0 with the side of the template as opposed to doing it the long ways. Um, there's a different ship size now called medium. So here we have all three base sizes. We've got large, medium, and small. Now medium is in between the two and a lot of ships have been converted to medium bases from other sizes. For example, this little guy right here now goes handy dandy on the medium base and you can even get these little pegs that convert from a small base to a large base on the bottom. Uh, to make sure that they will fit on their new bases. The new bases will come in the conversion kits and any new ships that are natively supposed to be on them, like the Fire Spray, will also get a medium base in their expansions, respectively. Now, uh, there are some differences also you're going to notice here when we're looking at these. For example, uh, if you'll notice that the uh, Scum Falcon's base right here uh, does not have a shaded in front firing arc. And that's not, it's not that's an, every ship doesn't necessarily have a primary arc. Uh, the Scum Falcon actually starts with a turret, and that's why we have things like this uh, to indicate whether it's, it's set to front and rear or left and right. And you can rotate this as an action. That's one of the actions it has available. Now, other ships are able to get turrets also. We have two different types. Uh, we have single arc, and, uh, single directional and dual directional, and they also come in small and larger sizes. So, you know, we could even put one in theory on Wedge here if he were to somehow get an upgrade slot that allowed him to take a turret which he currently does not have, but like Y-Wings, for example. They don't have a turret natively, but they can take one. So that's what we have. You'll get a whole bunch of these type of th different things as well. So that is basically our three, our three different base sizes. There are some other differences between the base sizes too, such as things like tractor tokens and ions, for example. Um, you know, a, a, like one ion or one tractor token can tractor or ionize a ship that's small, but it'll take two for a medium ship and three for a large base ship. Next, we're going to take a look at some of the new pilot cards. And if you'll notice, there's no upgrade slots and no points costs on these pilot cards. These are going to be controlled uh, by FFG through the app or also sometimes released through a, a PDF file. And that's kind of how a lot of the non-FFG uh, squad builders have been able to populate their own lists. And currently, at least at launch, the official app builder is still kind of buggy, so a lot of people are still using some third-party uh, squad builders. But um, that being said, those points are all subject to change, as well as the upgrades that they, everything can take is all subject to change. So if, for example, if it seems like that uh, Darth Vader should no longer be able to take you know, a force upgrade, which is one of the new types, then uh, they can always just take that away from him if it becomes too powerful. Of course, I don't think they would do that. 
but they have the ability to in case the meta kind of runs wild. Um, one of the things you're going to notice in here is that we have a couple of new things as we look at these two pilots. Uh, first off, Darth Vader has a new type of ability called Force, and what that means is that he's going to start the game with a couple of Force tokens, and he'll be able to spend those Force tokens, and they're going to look kind of like this. And when he spends them, they'll flip over. Uh, he's got a little plus arrow next to that and a little up arrow. And that just means that uh, during the beginning of your turn, you can flip one of them face up. And you're going to be able to get one back each turn. You'll regenerate one, basically. And uh, sometimes there will be symbols like that that don't have an up, uh, you know, a symbol that lets you regenerate. But if it has that symbol, it lets you regenerate. And basically, force, you can spend that to basically as a single die focus. But you can also spend it to do other things like Darth Vader's initial ability here. You can spend a force to perform an extra action. So he still kind of gets his bonus actions. Also, ships are going to have a uh, you know built-in titles that were on 1.0 they're kind of kind of be built in here at the bottom of the ship cards text and that's kind of going to give them the stuff that the ship was supposed to have natively uh, so you don't have to worry about auto include titles anymore they're automatically built in right there um, if you look over at Guri you're going to notice that she doesn't have a focus anymore she's got this new uh, symbol called calculate and basically calculate is meant to be how a droid would focus and you've got this new token here and you're gonna notice you're gonna have a lot of round tokens like your evades and focuses are gonna be round tokens and and all round tokens go away at the end of the round whereas other types of tokens don't necessarily go away for example differently shaped tokens right but yes, uh, so Guri can calculate instead of focusing, and that's a cool way to distinguish droids from humans, uh, or humanoids at least, and uh, that's also going to play a big part, presumably, in the Clone Wars factions when they come out as well, uh, considering that we have Force users, uh, a lot more, for, you know, an entire mechanic for Force users, as well as a new mechanic for droids. Uh, there's not a whole lot of droids in the game as it is during release of 2.0, but that is a cool ability. You're also going to notice that there's chained actions, and, and some of those chained actions are red. So basically, there's, there's two different things we're going to talk about. First, we're going to talk about red actions. A red action is just like a normal action. However, if you complete that action, you take a stress token. And that does mean if you fail an action, you don't get the stress token. So if I were to, if I had a red barrel roll, I could attempt that barrel roll. If I complete it, then I get a stress. Uh, now, uh, a chained action means that after I complete a focus, like in this case of Darth Vader right here, after I take a focus, I have the option to take that red barrel roll as well. Now, it's only on the ones that it specifically lets you. So this is a way for them to let almost everybody have the, uh, the old push the limit talent, talent, but only with certain things. So Guri, for example, if she does a boost or barrel roll, she can then kind of push the limit into calculate, but she can't boost and push the limit into um, barrel roll or vice versa. You can only do specific ones, and it's a way for them to kind of control that based on a pilot's power or abilities. So that much is pretty interesting. Um, uh, again, if you look at the uh, the ship cards, you're still going to see a lot of the same stats. You're going to see uh, primary attack, uh, agility, hull, shields. Um, some of those values have been retooled, but for the most part, they should still be fairly similar to their older respective values. Uh, you will notice that for primary attack, it will be have a different symbols if they're a primary turret and don't have that frontal arc. Speaking of printed frontal arcs. Here's another example of a ship that has two weapons. You you have a three forward primary arc and also a single directional turret, making uh, this Lancer very, very similar to the way it used to be. I also want to talk about initiative. Initiative is what used to be called pilot skill, and uh, basically your top pilot skill or initiative is now six, and your bottom is one, and that's just meant to bring them all closer together, and some of those have been changed from where they were. Darth Vader was always a nine, and now he's a six. That's still the highest, but you're going to see a lot less sixes. Uh, fives are pretty much still aces, while fours are just relatively high pilot skill, and anything below four are not aces. Um, generally, your fives and six are your aces, though, but four is still a competitive, whereas your ones and twos are generally your generics. Bombs have also changed. They're no longer really called bombs. They're now called devices. This is the device upgrade symbol, as well as upgrade cards as a whole have changed because they're no longer the small cards. They're now full-size cards just turned sideways. If they have any prerequisites that will be over here below, it might say scum only or something like that, or it might even sometimes upgrades can require that your ship has a certain action available to it, uh, but that's when it's, what's going to be required over here, and it's going to talk to you about 
uh, what, what the ability does. Now, devices are divided into two different categories, mines and bombs, and they're going to say that, and there's going to be certain things that are going to reference bombs only or mines only, and that's important. Another thing is this new type of uh, token called charge, and it's similar to the force in that you can flip it over and spend it. Um, charge usually doesn't refresh, although it is possible to refresh charge, but there's two different types of charge symbols you're going to find. Those with that little plus triangle, and without it, the plus triangle will regenerate a charge, and then without it, like the bombs, for example, do not have uh, charge and sometimes you can even do a reload action to recharge one of your weapons, but mines specifically tends to have the ability that they cannot be recharged, even through a forced means like reloading. And what that does is, basically it just allows you to spend a charge, flip this over, and to say, all right, well we've dropped our Connor net, and now it's gone. So there's no more flipping over of upgrade cards anymore. You just, if it's a card, if it's a card that would be expended, you're just spending the charge on it. And it's also a way for them to control certain things that are maybe only supposed to happen once around uh, that it lets you have, you know, have put a charge on there, but it regenerates and it's a way for you to have multiple charges that way. Now there's also a new thing, this little uh, ordnance symbol here means that range bonus will not apply. So if we're going to take a look at some missiles, for example, um, this is you know very, very similar to our old version. This is actually going to come with five charge, and this is a way for them to give uh, your typical missiles and torpedoes extra uh, extra charges so you can fire them more than once uh, and, and allow certain upgrade cards to have more charges than others. Uh, so anything that's going to be a limited amount of shots you they can control with charge. But the uh, range 2 to 3 here uh, is the range for this weapon, but that little or that little red missile symbol is going to mean that it does not get a range bonus. So if your defender is at range 3, they're not going to get that range bonus, which is important. And of course it shows you that it attacks out of the front arc. Uh, and in contrast, the ion cannon turret over here um, is only shot at range one to two, but it doesn't have that symbol. So in other words, so basically, that, what that means is you can actually get range bonus now with your ion cannon turret. And a lot of the turrets are kind of like this, which is a nice thing to be able to shoot at range one uh, with three dice and get a bonus die from the ion cannon turret. Uh, and also, this changes the way that ions, ion weapons, generally work as well, because they uh, the first damage kind of gives you a damage point, and then any other damage that you would do that you can basically uh, cash those in, uh, or you do cash those in for ion tokens. So it's possible to get more than one ion token with a single ion cannon turret shot now, which is important if you ever want to ionize a big ship because you're going to need three tokens. Uh, also, it's going to sometimes these upgrades can give you extra things like this gives you uh, a turret. Uh, since the symbol's right there, but it also gives you the action to rotate your turret because that is an action. So if you're going to have a turret, you're going to need to be able to rotate it. Which means also, in theory, that they could someday give you a turret that doesn't give you the action to rotate your turret. So that would mean you would have to start it in a particular uh, function and not be able to rotate it. Maybe it's called broken turret or something. It could even be a higher payoff with the, uh, with the, with the negative side that you are stuck pointing it one way for the whole game. I don't think they'll do that, but that would be interesting. There are also upgrades that are going to be variable point cost. Your basic three mods that were kind of staples for the original game, like shield upgrade, hull upgrade, and stealth device, are the prominent ones that have variable point costs, and those are going to change based on criteria, and those criteria are basically subject to change, but right now, uh, things like your ship size or how or, or whatever your existing agility are can uh, modify those, and those are all going to be controlled by the app, but these are, have become very expensive upgrades based on that variable point cost. Another major difference is that the dials have all changed, and they have fancy new backings for all of the different factions, which is nice, although you still can use the dial upgrade kits, but I really like these new dials. Uh, one thing that's going to take some getting used to is that uh, your marker is going to point to the top here, but one of the biggest things you're going to notice is that dials no longer have green maneuvers, you now have blue maneuvers. And it's called difficulty. So instead of saying, "Oh, it changes all these maneuvers to uh, from you know to to blue or whatever," there's upgrades that will reference that and just say decrease the difficulty, and that will turn a red maneuver into a white maneuver or a white maneuver into a blue maneuver, etc. Um, so it's kind of like a chart for that difficulty level of maneuvers, and I guess that in, in from a certain way is future proofing because that allows them to potentially add even more difficult maneuvers at some point in the future. They could, in theory, add a tier above red, like purple maneuvers that somehow give you even more stress or some other effect. I, I, I don't think they'll do that, but 
the main change here is that green has changed to blue, and the point of that is that uh, it was actually a colorblind change. There's really no gameplay function change other than they changed that, but uh, a lot of the ships do have additional maneuvers added, which is important. Some of the uh, some of the ships that you're very familiar with may have gained S loops or or Talon rolls or, or or all kinds of different maneuvers that they didn't have before. So a lot of ships were rebalanced when it comes to their maneuver dials. Another change that was made was the inclusion of range zero. You still have ranges one, two, and three, and they still function for the most part the same as they did in X-wing 1.0. But now, when two things are touching, that's considered to be range zero, uh, just to future-proof things and to give it a distinction from things that are at range 1 and not touching. One of the last things I want to talk about that is a pretty major change, well, it's a couple of things, is, is this numbering system. Basically, you're supposed to number all of your ships now, uh, and they have a lot of different numbers available for it, uh, and that's because they don't have blue and red target locks anymore. You just have a target lock for that number. So if I'm number 7, uh, I can just put my target locks on that way and basically if we're both using the same number you know you can flip them around black or white I can flip these around uh, the other side is going to be a, a black side versus the white side or vice versa you can uh, you know you can basically do your numbering scheme that way and that's just to kind of put a little bit less clutter on the battlefield now target locks are an interesting thing in this game because it, it illustrates one of the new mechanics in that you can fail actions and you kind of had that before with maybe trying to boost a barrel roll and it bumped into an obstacle so you couldn't do it. And so in X-Wing 1.0 you would go and, and try to just do a different action instead. But now in X-Wing 2.0 if you fail an action, basically you attempt to do something that it turns out you can't do, then you're done. That counted as your action. And and that's uh, that's a big deal because target lock is one of the biggest reasons that you may do that. Now granted you may also fail with a booster barrel roll that is a potential but if you were to target lock uh, an enemy ship and they were just out of range uh, you wouldn't get the target lock and that that took up your action slot so that's kind of a big deal because uh, a lot of people would abuse the check for target lock attempt at a thing just to kind of measure distance They're like oh am I you know am I am I in range for target lock no oh okay well then I'll just focus so now you have to think really long and hard before you do that, because is it worth sacrificing your entire action? And maybe sometimes it is, but that's still kind of cheesy to do, so I don't really recommend doing that if, you, if it's obvious that it's not there, because I think it's just bad form. But yes, failing actions is important. Uh, if, you, um, if you fail a red action, like I said before, you don't get the stress from doing it. You do have to actually complete that. But it's a very interesting thing, uh, and I think it's going to, you know, probably a good change to kind of decrease abuse. Additionally, you can target lock obstacles and even other friendly ships if you wanted to, just in case a scenario called for it. Um, another thing is there is a new damage deck. Uh, so you will need the core set for that as well because you're going to get new obstacles, you're going to get a new damage deck. The movement templates have changed to have the new line right in there on it so it helps you line things up and is easier facilitates barrel, barrel rolls and uh, things of that sort. And uh, currently at launch there's uh, going to be lots of different factions. There's only three available right now. We are, you know, the, the scum, the rebels, and the empire, but we're also getting the First Order and Resistance as their own factions, which does mean that your T-70 X-Wings and your First Order tie FOs are pulled out of the Rebellion and the Empire, respectively, and added to their own faction, but they also have announced that the uh, Clone Wars factions, the uh, Separatists and the uh, Old Republic, are coming as well, so in 2019 we're going to see a lot of new stuff for X-Wing. This game is going to have seven factions eventually, so a lot of variability. I'm not sure if those other factions will ever get fully flushed out like the Re Rebels and the Empire are, uh, and it still remains to be seen whether or not Scum is going to be a faction that truly spans all three timelines. As characters like Jango Fett, for example, could you could make an argument that they could be Separatists, or you could make an argument that they could be Scum. But seven factions for this game is going to be very, very interesting, and I definitely would suggest you pick one and just start with that one and go from there. Uh, that's uh, definitely a thing that is going to be helpful and they're doing a lot to make sure that when you buy one faction you don't have to buy a cross faction to get all the upgrades so the, the business model is improving 
There's a whole lot of good stuff in this game for you. So uh, if you have any more questions, go ahead and leave, drop them down in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and let me know what you think, guys. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and check out X-Wing 2.0. Uh, I cover a lot of videos. I'm going to put a link to some over on the uh, left-hand side. But uh, I've, I cover a lot of other games, too. Check out Star Wars Armada and Legion as well. There are a lot of very, very fun games. But hopefully you found this video helpful. And uh, I invite you to subscribe and click that little bell for alerts so you don't miss out on future content. I want to thank you guys so much for watching, and have a great day.